for joining me for another episode of the bring back soul music podcast my special 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 guest today is a member of a chicago-based band called attack the sound i'm speaking to davo davo how you doing today sir i'm good how about yourself i'm good good welcome to the bring back soul music podcast man hey thank you so much i'm excited to be here oh i'm we're glad i'm excited to have you um uh-huh. now like i said you're out of chicago and just thinking back there's so many um, you know, great artists that have come out of Chicago. And we've interviewed a couple of artists uh, from Chicago as well previously. Um, the band is called Attack the Sound. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess you guys are an eight member band. Um, yeah. But uh, you guys have a uh, new music out. Uh, I think it's called Reboot the Sound. Is that the name of the, the album? Yeah, that... Uh... Yeah, that's the name of the album EP that we just released. Um, and uh, it, it's basically... A, hold, hold, on, hold on, hold on, David. We're going to get into all that. So I don't oh, want to okay. yeah. jump the gun. Okay. Um, bad, bad. But for those who never heard of Attack the Sound, tell us about tell us a little bit more about the band. Okay. Um, just a little bit more about the band. Like you mentioned before, we're, we're an eight-piece ensemble uh, made up of all of my favorite instruments like growing up basically um and we try to focus on giving a more youthful or i guess like a 21st century approach to you know r&b jazz and you know and, and all of that you basically becomes pop at this point and and um uh we just like to have fun so i i came and conceptualized this well, many, many years, and now in present time, it's becoming uh, more and more of a staple, especially in the Chicago community, as well as just the way that music is being produced and, and you know, um, ingested by listeners. Like, they're not looking for just specifically one genre. They're, they're looking for things that ha- are, have a multi-echelon approach to it, that gives them a feeling of everything that they like. So I think that uh, our buffet style sound is just right for what people are looking for right now. Okay, and let me back up just a little bit. When did you guys? Uh, when did you guys form? Uh, the the band originally formed in two thousand nine after changing our name from um, uh, we were called Technical Difficulties. And we were working on a project at the time actually called Affect the Sound. And, you know, you just look at release music and put it out. And so you try to, you know, see if there's any other projects that have that name already for you release it or these types of things. And I came across two other bands, one in U.S. and one in the U.K. that was already called Technical Difficulties. So I was like, I, we were so, so young at the time. And it's like, I don't have the time to fight you know, a legal battle with these bands that probably have been established for years now. So I just was like, hey, we got to change the name. We went through some brainstorming and ultimately came out with Attack the Sound. And so it would have been Attack the Sound, Affect the Sound. That project never happened. And that iteration of the band ultimately uh, has changed over time. Uh, But Attack the Sound has stood the test of time. So 2009 until, you know, now. So before we get too far ahead, why don't you uh, why don't you name the other members of the band? Sure. Uh, so on drums we have Paris Jamal. On bass we have uh, Netta Sherelle. On uh, guitar we have Viano. On saxophone we have Vante. On trumpet we have Way. On trombone we have Royce. And then as the least, uh, oh, sorry. And then on piano, we have Nikki. And then on lead vocals, you have your, me, of course, Dave sounds. Okay. And we're Attack the Sound. Um, now, were you guys all, and you said you guys were started when you were really young. Were you guys all like classmates in school or how did you guys all come together? 
I wish we had that cool story, but uh, uh, no, we, we all met uh, along the journey. Um, Nicole, who plays Keys for us, I met her when I was in college. She was uh, finishing up, about to graduate, and I was just coming in as, uh, as a freshman. And um, the iteration of the band at the time that I had, we actually performed at the school and like the cafeteria, like a two piece kind of, kind of thing. And she saw us then and, you know, loved what we were doing and we stayed in contact. We've tried to add her to the band several times beforehand. I just couldn't get her locked down. Um, and, you know, this last year, she finally had the time to commit and came, came on, on board. Um, Vante, uh, we were doing a, uh, we were backing Bianca Shaw who was signed to Taylor Bennett Entertainment, his chances, you know, younger brother. And they were playing Taste of Chicago. And I just remember Vontae who played saxophone, he came to that rehearsal. And I thought that, you know, he, he, he came knowing all of his music, everything was squared away. And I was just like, this guy's phenomenal. And if he never plays for Bianca ever again, I want him to play for me. <laughs> and I told him that, so he started coming to our rehearsals. Uh, way I ended up running into him after he was a bit frustrated from playing like out on the streets and I used to bus as well so I used to play out on the streets uh, uh, like Michigan and Chicago um, in Chicago like on the Michigan street and also in the subways uh, on, the, on the trains and I know how frustrating it could be at times where you're not really making you know uh, a living but you enjoy doing what you're doing but you're being exploited in other ways that you can't be recompensated for, like people taking your pictures and your image and using it as just like a street performer. And he ran into a lot of problems like that. So I invited him on the team uh, because we have, you know, we have a group of people that understand how to work around those things. Uh, so he came on. Um, Royce actually came to a studio session uh, when we were recording one of our um, singles on the project, uh, uh, Reboot to the Sound. Uh, Paris, we found Paris through a Facebook post. He came with a few other guys at the time, and he's the only guy that stuck around. And then Viano and I actually went to high school together. So we have that history. He and I went to high school together. Um, he was a year or two um, behind me. We both played guitar in the school all the time. Uh, and they tried to make it like a little rivalry thing. Uh, wasn't so, though. Uh, he ended up leaving the school. And years later, we kept in touch. And when he was looking to, um, you know, develop his own project, I invited him on to just see like the inner workings of how how it is to lead a band, you know, because sometimes you need to see that. Like we have an idea of what we want, but there's a lot of elements that go into actually leading a band. So um, Viano ended up jumping on board. So uh, every everyone I've interfaced or interacted with at some point in my life and then later was able to come back and say, hey, I think it would be great if you were part of uh, this project, part of the elements of what it is that I'm, I'm building. And they agreed and we've been rocking, you know, ever since. Okay. Um, now, getting back to you, um, did, your, did you come from a family of musicians or? Um... Not necessarily a family of musicians, but I came from a musical family. We, we didn't really have a choice in what we did like, because my grandfather was a pastor. So we're at church like seven days a week. Uh, so you had to do something involved in the church. And I think everybody at one point or another went through the choir. I absolutely did enjoy the choir later on. However, my voice started to change and start to crack. And uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't fun anymore because I wasn't able to sing the way that I wanted to anymore. I had to find something else to do. So I ended up moving from that uh, into the audiovisual side at the church. But I had cousins and uncles uh, who were all musicians. And so when I finally decided that I wanted to learn guitar, it was, it, it was, it was simple because all the instruments were readily available. They were everywhere. Like if you wanted saxophone, we had a spare saxophone. So it was like through, uh, through my way, I ended up inheriting my grandfather's uh, old acoustic guitar. And my uncle who plays bass, who also, he also taught me bass, my uncle June. He said, hey, uh, I'm not going to teach you this guitar. You have to learn, your, learn on your own if you're really serious about it. Because I had gone through so many other things. Like 
think about watching yeah, you know, a young kid like. So first you're in the choir, then you leave choir, then you want to learn piano, then you leave that and you want to learn drums, then you go do audio visual, then you want to do the usher board. It's like, if you're serious, show me. And, and I was, and I took it, you know, extremely serious. And I, I think the relationship of my first guitar also belonging to, you know, my late grandfather was like a little bit of, uh, you know, an extra nudge because this was the instrument that, you know, one of the greatest men that I ever knew held, you know, so I definitely, uh, was extremely interested in teaching myself to play and getting better at it. Hold on a second. I, I literally live right next to a hospital, so sometimes the yeah, old they Chicago always end, sirens. Huh? Yeah, they always end right here. It's just coming into it. Yeah, so I definitely uh, was going to teach myself to play. I did. I accomplished that. And um, yeah, and, and then it, it was just like uh, overwhelming. Uh, like flow of support from all the other musicians that are in my family because, you know, we've, we've got guys that sing, guys that play all type of instruments and perform, entertain, uh, uh, choir directors, like vocal coaches. And once they saw that I was like serious about this, they just, they just opened up all of like the resources to me to be able to just, just get better along the, along the way and along the time. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's get into uh, reboot the sound uh reboot to the sound excuse me um tell us about this project i listened to it i loved it i thought it was very very um diverse um and when i got the information from your pr group um they said it's a jazzy hip-hop rock and gospel and when i read that i was like well how are you gonna pull all that off but <laughs> when i listened to reboot to the sound you pulled it off. So talk to us about that project. Okay, so I can't talk about reboot without talking to prequel. So we, in 2017, we had um, put a project together of a bunch of songs that I'd actually recorded as I was still building the band. Uh, basically solo, I re you know, worked with producers and recorded them, but I had all the intentions of working with the band. So the band, we played them live. We just, you know, they just didn't play on the recordings. So um, we had a few songs like that. And then we actually sat down together and at least three of the songs we did, like with just uh, the musicians I had at the time. And we released this project, it was called Prequel to the Sound. And, and it was definitely ahead of its time. A lot of the same elements that you're hearing now on, on Reboot were on Prequel. It's just at the time, we weren't at a status where people were interested in listening as well as the, um, I guess you want to say the, what, what's the word I'm looking for? The environment, the atmosphere, you know, around music at the time, I wasn't completely interested in a project like that. You know, this is a sim similar format that we'd already released. Uh, a few of the songs are, are, uh, we reboot it, which is why it's called Reboot to the Sound. A few of the songs reboot it. Some I, I decided I'm going to save those for later because those are some of my favorite songs. Uh, so you have, we had Prequel, and I think Prequel was great. I just think that the execution at the time was, was too soon. So I, I knew we had to find some way to, to uh, get those songs back out there. So we ended up working with some great producers. Uh, one was named Jovia Armstrong. And she came in, uh, she took a song I was developing at the time called Bad News, which is the first single on Reboot to the Sound. And we developed it to what, what it is now. That's, that's pure R&B, right? And when it was done, it was completely different. Well, not completely different, but it was definitely a step, uh, a step in a different direction from what we play live. When we, when we used to play it live, it had a little bit more rock in it. And she's like, no, we're making this straight R&B. And when I first heard it, I loved it. I loved it. Uh, some of the other, I can't say that for some of the other guys, they, they weren't too happy, but I loved it instantly. And I knew that this was going to be the foot in the door, the wedge we needed to get the attention onto what it was that I was going for. Uh, and so we got... Um, bad news 
and I love that song. So after Bad News, we were already working on re-recording Love is War. And if you go to SoundCloud, you could, I think you can find the older version of Love is War, which was fine, to be completely honest. I just had always felt other elements were necessary in that song. And at one of the rehearsals, our guitarist at the time, um, Zeke Lakai, uh, shout out to Zeke, by the way, he he started playing around with a a a, a gospel like inspirational vamp at the end of the song and as soon as I heard it I knew the song needed that so I had to go back and re-record Love is War I just didn't have the inspiration and direction and once I heard Bad News it was like it clicked right in my head and so um, that was the next song that I actually went to go do Um, it actually wasn't I actually it was one of the last to be done but it was gonna be number two I always knew that Uh, and so with Love is War and Bad News kind of uh, having a similar feel, uh, I wanted to to take and just go completely left field into more of an, uh, an electric, uh, energetic feel, which we ended up remastering and we took and remastered and changed a couple of parts in Music Soul on Fire, which is by far one of the oldest songs that I have that we still perform. I uh, love that song in depth, lots of energy, lots of fun. So a lot of like Love is War, um, the music song on fire, people make love. All three of those songs were on prequel. Uh, when they were released, like I said, it was just too ahead of its time. Uh, they and, and they were basically we reformatted a little bit because Love is War being second, it used to be uh, number six on the project. But um, People Make Love was always after Music Soul on Fire. And that was mainly because I wanted to get you like super energized, super energetic. And then after that, put you back into like a chilled sexual feel with People Make Love. Like you're like, man, that song was exciting. What's next? And then it's like, ooh, okay, this is sexy. You know, so I was very excited uh, uh, to to redo those songs and represent those songs the way that we, we did it. A lot of remastering, a lot of new producers that came in um uh Gabe Gabriel Alex came in and worked with us Jovia Armstrong Isaiah Sharkey um what's the same guy's name Rich Harris Lord Haiti you know uh Paris Jamal the list goes on Vince Lawrence and then myself and we just really were able to die like dissect each song and figure out what it was missing beforehand to represent it and then once I did that, I always like to stay ahead of the game. So we recreated a few of the songs into remixes. Okay. Because th- this way, like if there needs to be a remix, we can just release that as a single. And that song like takes off, you know, I wanted to be ahead of the game because there's so many remix artists that are out here and they'll remix your song and it'd be great. And they'll take, they'll get all the credit and it, you know, interest, um, you know, interest for that. But I wanted to show that we also have in-house a really good mind to be able to reproduce and remix our own songs. So like if someone else needs us to remix them, like you could like attack the sound becomes a a complete house. Like we could do mixing, we could do mastering, we could do producing all of that stuff, like send us and we could do it. And I wanted to to show that as well, that we're not just musicians, but we're also a group of, of producers in every sense like we can make beats we could produce live sound we could arrange uh we can compose all of that is here and i wanted to show that through um, the remixes that we did there and then my absolute favorite song was uh pick up your phone uh and that that is the uh that demo there that we put there is maybe like two years in the in the making, literally. Like it's taken the longest to get to where it's at. And uh, just if you dissect it and break it down, it's got the, the pop rock in the beginning. And then when I get to my bridges and my breakdowns, it's actually a hip hop tone on the drum. Like I break it down to specifically be hip hop. And then at the very end, we throw gospel and New Orleans second line together. And so it goes through a lot of different uh, genres of music, but it does it very fluently. And so that's why it took so long because I needed to make sure that I would be able to <laughs> get these things to blend together and they, and they do so, so well. We'll continue our episode after this message. 
Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. BGRC WQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Hey, I'm Kenny Lattimore, and you're checking out the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with my brother Todd Woods. Now, back to our conversation. And so, yeah, that's a prequel. And then we were able to get uh, Joel Q and um, uh, B.K. BK on uh, the remixes for People Make Love. They you know, came on, they rapped, and they were fantastic. They were so good that normally you would only release one. You have a bunch of people like do their verse and pick the best verse out of all those, but they were both so good that I was like, yo, we're going to release both of these. No, we're, we're just gonna, only going to do one. Uh, and I, I, you know, I, I couldn't help myself, so I did it. And uh, yeah, the, the project was extremely fun for me and not a single moment of it was stressful because I, I knew it was, I knew it was what and how we wanted you know, to present ourselves and having a, a rhyme and reason behind everything made it all make sense. Okay. Let me back up just a little bit. Uh, now, this was uh, the prequel you said was 2017, I believe you said. Yeah, 2017 for the prequel. And you mentioned earlier that it was ahead of its time. Explain that for me a little bit. What does it mean that, what do you mean when it, you say it was ahead of its time? So, you have this huge push now where you see artists that are doing more uh, multi-genre or crossover music within the, the the songs that they're releasing. And that wasn't always the case. And even when they did do it, it was always like a separate project. And I say like a, Nicki Minaj, for example, like you can listen to some of her stuff and you can easily differentiate between what year it was that she made that that song because on that project those all those things kind of sound the same now you have it where um most artists all their music like will not be the same they may be an r&b artist and then they're they're doing their r&b over a completely you, you know to the to the bone rock song you know what I mean? Without changing the song. Because normally, like uh, CeeLo Green, for example, he's got this song, uh, No One's Gonna Love You, which is originally by bands. Like, no one's gonna love you more than I do. So that's originally by bands uh, by a band of horses. But, uh, and I love their version. Then I heard his version. Now, instead of just singing to the rock version of the song, we reproduced it, right? And that's what that's what you've seen a lot of artists do. They reproduce it, reapproach it in their own way. So they have this version of the cover that you never had before. Which mad respect to all of that. But now it's like, they're like, well, actually, I want to do a rock song. I want to do a song that's got a little bit more umph to it, a little bit more energy to it, and not just stick to this, you know, this traditional RB lane. So you have this alternative RB and pop, you know, that's being created that allows you to go between these genres. And it wasn't a huge push for that then. I mean, I, I like to say that I foresaw it coming, which is why I you know, established my project that way. But I didn't know that it would be you know, so much more of a vibe because now with everyone just releasing singles and not full projects, uh, unless they're huge artists, most people are just digesting the singles. So they're going from country to pop to r&b you know and now so like if i release a set of project if i release a project it kind of wants i'll kind of want to follow that same format so i keep their attention because if i got three songs that sound similar and the same you know i'm not luther banjo so you're not going to stick around and listen to it but if i give you three songs that are good that all have a different tone you get to pick and choose which song you like out of that project which means you're going to at least come back and spin it you're going to say hey this song was great. I, that's going to be my go-to every time. Love is War is my go-to every time. Bad News is my go-to every time. And then you're like, eh, I mean, I, I enjoyed the remixes, but this was my favorite because now it creates a conversation, you know, and that's, and because we're, di because we're absorbing music that way, that's the way, you know, most people are um, releasing their music. So prequel was ahead of that power curve. And um, 
I'm kind of glad it was because it gave us, it let us know that we had the blueprint and the formula already. We just, you know, didn't have the greatest execution at the time at the level that we were at. Okay. Um, now, are you guys a independent group or are you guys signed to a label? How does that work? No, uh, we are uh, completely independent. I don't necessarily have an issue with being signed to a label, um, but as of right now, we're, we're independent. And I mean, for a band of our size, um, it's never been a conversation that we want to stay independent. It's just that we're able to do a lot being independent right now. And no one makes the decisions for us. We make them for ourselves. We talk unanimously and we say, hey, we're not doing that show in Seattle because of whatever happened there, you know? And we're like, okay, well, we're not going to do that show in Seattle. Now, when you're signed to a label and you have obligations, you have to fulfill these things. Um, that, may, that may not, you know, be as simple as uh, just saying that we won't do it. In recent time, you can see that there are uh, a lot of political and social political uh, things that have happened in the nation, in the world, and artists have refused to play. And, and that's great, you know, that their labels or their management have, have backed them for that. So I don't foresee that being an issue moving forwards, but for now we are independent until someone comes with a, a deal that makes sense. I mean, I've got, it's eight of us, you know, so if I'm leading, I got seven mouths to feed. So, you know, it just, just make it make sense. Yeah, I, the only reason I asked was because you were talking about the various sounds that you guys have. And I think sometime maybe a record company will want to just nail you down to one particular kind of sound. Um, yeah, we've actually had that conversation with a few people. And it's not that they want to actually nail us down to a particular sound. They just want, they want to get out of the middle, right? And it's just like, okay, let's just get out of the middle and go, you know, further to one side or another doesn't necessarily hurt because, you know, saying like, hey, you guys got talent, you've got something here. If we can just get you here a little bit more, we can make we can make you money, which ultimately makes us money. So I don't have a problem with those these types of things because that's basically what happened with, with bad news. Like I said before, like we played that song differently live. And then when the producer got their hands on it, it's like, this is it. And we're like, whoa, that is completely different than what we did or what we thought. It was like a nudge to, you know, one side. It's like, now we're going to, you know, possibly be defined just by this sound and this drama. And, you know, it, it actually helps. It helps for booking reasons. It helps for conversation reasons until we can get to the level where we say, this is our sound and this is what it is. You know, like they have this saying about the weekend, like what is the weekend sound? And they say sad stripper music. That's what they call this music. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. But what, it, what is he? Is, is, is he pop? Is he R&B? Like, what is the weekend? You know? We don't really know, but we know that he makes sad stripper music. So I'm just like, he's at a point where it doesn't matter what his genre is. He's, he's like, you're going to listen. The weekend drops a single. You're going to listen. Yeah. Um, now that kind of leads me into my next question, because um, with the information that I got said that you guys are, uh, let me get it right, quote unquote, chai pop or shy Shai pop. pop. Um, mm -hmm. And is that sort of reflecting what you're talking about? You guys are kind of diverse or is it just particular to, I'm assuming the shy means Chicago. Uh -huh. um, so is it particular to what you guys do or particular to Chicago and the, the, the type of music that comes out of that city? So yeah, it's particular to both, to what we do and the music coming out of Chicago. Because when you think about it, there's a LA sound. There's a Houston sound. There's an Atlanta sound, right? There's a Miami sound. There is a New York sound. There's a London sound. Got all these sounds. And somehow there's not a definitive Midwest sound. And because in the Midwest, in Chicago, in surrounding uh, cities, this is how we play our, our music. This is how we do our shows. Like you can't go to a show and you know, even it doesn't matter if that person is from Chicago and is definitively R&B, you're not gonna catch a show without them doing something that has some crossover because that's how you captivate an audience. We live in the third major city in, 
you know, in the nation. And when you do a performance, people of all sorts come out. We just did a show on Saturday and I'm looking in the crowd and yes, it's predominantly black, like in the crowd. Um, but there were a few people that weren't. And one of the guys was a buddy of mine who is, you know, an Italian dude. And he was like, what are you doing tonight? I'm like, I'm at a show. He shows up at the show. Now, everybody else that comes to the show, they come dressed nice. You know, they've got, you know, the nice shoes on and the pants and the jacket with the overcoat. My guy comes in and he's in a full, from head to toe, Adidas jumpsuit with Adidas shoes on. Okay. And Adidas t-shirt on. He loves Adidas. All right. He stands out like a sore thumb. But he stayed the entire show and loved everything that we did. Because it doesn't matter who's in the audience. Like, we play our shows and we present our music in a way that no matter who's there or what audience we're playing for, they're going to enjoy it. You know, so it doesn't matter if the crowd was all black or all white. Like what, what matters is like in Chicago, like you're going to captivate your entire, the entire audience that you have there. And we just kind of learned to do that, you know, because you, you wouldn't get booked at a show. Be Sometimes you wouldn't get booked at a show because you have like a huge following. They, they need to fill a slot and you're like, okay, cool. And you get there and the two bands before you are like heavy rock and you're like, I'm playing soul music. You know what I mean? And you feel out of place and then you play your set and everyone loves it. You know, so it's like, that's how Chicago is. So that's the Chicago sound, you know. Um, so we just decided to give that, you know, live presentation that we're gonna, that we want to make sure to record an actual name and that shot pop so the same way we present ourselves live the same way um we're going to present ourselves record it so that way if you're they're listening to us in you know zimbabwe like this is this is what you're going to get when you come you know if you come to chicago not just from attack the sound you can go to any any group most groups in chicago and you're going to get about the same feel or surrounded like you're going to get about the same feel um, now, uh, Reboot to the Sound, I believe it was released what, back in November, I think. Yes. Or, okay. How has it been received by your fans and the, uh, and the public? Uh, so far, from what I can see, it's been received really well. Um, I ha we've had, we have quite a bit of press on it, which we were not expecting. Uh, we actually had one target goal uh, with, our, uh, with, with this thing, and we were looking to get on a platform called Audio Tree. Um, which we landed that deal, by the way, but it was a bunch of press that has come out, including this interview. And I'm just be completely honest, that was not what we were, it's not what we were reaching for. You know, um, we, we basically did a modified campaign to focus strictly on what our goal was. And we got a bunch of things shaken off of it. So for me, it's been a complete and total success because the things that have, that have come off of, off of this, have been, you know, tremendous. And I wasn't even looking for them, you know, and that's what makes it even better. I wasn't looking for it and here it is. And so um, I think it's been received really well. The write-ups have been really nice. I think uh, some of the um, authors have really taken the time to dive into what, we, what, what we're trying to do and what we're aiming for. And they really capture the essence of what, makes attack the sound attack the sound and shy pop shy pop and so i think that that's 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 really cool and yeah i'm just i'm just waiting to see if there's going to be anything else that comes from it but for all the people that are listening at the time of the this airing like go and check it out and tell me what you think we're on all streaming platforms is attack the sound so you know if you hate it just google attack the sound and tell us that you hate it but at least you listened. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of uh, reaching out to you, where can people reach out to you on social media? They could find us on all social media platforms at Attack the Sound. That's A T T A C K T H E S O U N D, Attack the Sound. Um, and so, yeah, just Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, and we will definitely get out, uh, you know, get back to you if you. If you reach out to us, I do my best to try to respond to like emails and, and texts and all that stuff. So, you know, bear with me, like maybe like 24 hours, but I'll definitely respond. Okay. And speaking of uh, 
moving forward. What does uh, 2022 looks like look like for Attack to Sound? Okay, so on Prequel to the Sound, we released a demo version of um, Pick Up Your Phone. We are going to be back in the studio to um, finish develop. I said this has been a two-year process. It's now going to be a three-year process to finish developing that to um, a more uh, standard radio sound. So we're going to take it back and rework it. Um, I have a deal on the table to distribute uh, the dance mix of Love is War internationally. So we're waiting to hear back nice. from that. Thank you. Thank you. We're waiting to hear back from that. And then we got a project with Isaiah Sharkey, uh, Grammy Award winning um, musician and artist um, that we don't have a name for yet, but we gotten, we've gotten pretty far with it. I think I think we still need a few more songs, okay? Uh, but they tell me that we're good. I think we still need maybe like three, four more songs. And then I'll be happy. And, and, and that would basically give us singles out for the next like two, three years. We'll be able wow. to release singles. I'm actually uh, developing a animated music video for a song called Wake Up Call that we anticipate to release in Q1. But we'll see how the, how the cards fall. I'm really excited for people to hear that, hear the new music, um, hear our new sound. Um, everything we've, we've worked for the last, you know, 10, 12 years has led to this moment. So, you know, just be on a watch out in Q, Q1 for what we have developed. And, and, and until then, just listen to prequel to the sound. Okay. Do you guys, are you guys going to do any touring? Um, uh, up so or how is that working out? I would like to. We we actually have quite a bit of offers, and there's a few organizations that have been reaching out to to do touring. I I just don't think that we have the time right now with uh, some of our personal responsibilities um, to tour in Q1. But it's definitely something that I'd be looking for in like Q3 and Q4, like in the summer, you know, uh, and leading into the fall. So spring, summer, and fall potentially. But as of right now, like for Q1, Q2, we're going to be grounded here working on music uh, to present to you guys, as well as we have about at least six months worth of releases already planned. So, you know, it's like if the tour, if touring comes, it will come. But as of right now, I, I don't have uh, any, um, any uh, prospect on if that will happen or not. But I can tell you that there have been a few people that have reached out in, in several capacities for us to tour. Okay. Well, Dave, it sounds like you guys, um, sound like you guys are on the ball, man. And you guys are planning and got all kinds of stuff in the works. Congratulations. Um, anything else you want to add before we uh, close out this interview? For those listening to the interview that may be at whatever stage you are in your career, I just want to let you know that if you don't, plan you know for to succeed then you're going to plan to fail it, it it doesn't it doesn't hurt to get things wrong i mean it may sting but just like putting alcohol on a wound like it goes away over time right um, you have to try you have to get out there and you have to develop some type of plan even if that plan fails do yourself an after action review and say what would what was supposed to happen, what did happen, what went right, okay, and then what went wrong, and those things that went wrong, you take those things and you remember for the next time you initiate a plan. Keep moving forwards. Like, I started this attack the sound in two thousand nine, but I started my band in two thousand seven, right? And here we are. I'm making this interview in December of 2021 going into 2022. Nothing is for certain, but I can tell you that I never gave up. And by not giving up, I can say that the, the fruits of my labor that are, you know, that are budding and blooming, you know, and ripe now, I'm glad I didn't stop. I'm, I'm so glad I didn't stop and uh, nothing could ever take that away. So plan for something. I knew that I would get somewhere and where I am right now, I, I I'm, I'm extremely happy. Uh, I don't know if I would have been as happy if I would have been here sooner, but I can say that 
what I'm doing right now with my team is exactly where I need to be. All right. Well, Dave, um, you laid out a great case to uh, stick to this, stick to it, I should say. Um, thank you, man, for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. No problem. And that's Davo on the Bring Back Soul Music podcast, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Davo Sounds, from the group Attack the Sounds. You can find out more about Attack the Sound on their social media sites. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, support the channel. Check out our merch at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Some great deals. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.